Hey guys, what is up? It is Dominic, and in this video, we're going to be covering forms. Now, if you're new to the channel, we are, of course, talking about the greatest software on the planet, High Level, which allows you to take the entire platform, the whole software right here, and resell it at 97, 297, 497, literally whatever you want. You can also toss your logo here at the top left, and it becomes yours. Really awesome model. It is called SaaS Software as a Service, and I am Dominic Baptist, one of the top affiliates in the world, actually ranked number two right now. We are so close to number one, so if you guys want to try this out, use my affiliate link. You get 30 days for free. You get both of my courses for free. You get direct help from me personally and you get to join both of my Facebook groups which are super super helpful. We have about 4,000 members in there right now and it is just amazing. But you can find all the links to that in the description below and with that being said let's get right into custom forms. So first things first, how do you get to the forms tab? Well, you go to sites and then you go up here to forms and we're gonna go to the form builder. And then you can see all the forms that I've built in the past, but we are going to click create new form. Now, before I start, I really wanna break down why I'm making a video specifically on forms. It seems like such a small topic, such a small issue to make a full video on. However, after looking at my channel and going through everything, I realized there's something missing. I really wanna start hyper-focusing on certain aspects of high level and really going in depth on those. For instance, forms, maybe do one on survey, Surveys, chat widgets. I have, of course, already covered memberships, websites, and funnels, but there are so many other aspects like calendars, custom values, the opportunities tab, the reporting tab, all of these things that most people probably don't make videos on. I really want to start covering those. So I think that's going to be an experiment of mine over the next few weeks, and let's see how they go. So anyone in high level probably already knows how to build a basic form. I mean, you're looking at a full name right here, drag and drop, probably a phone number, an email, and then scroll down here to the bottom and put a button. And then of course, you can customize this any way that you want. If we were to click the button right here, you can see all of our options over on the far right. We can change the button's alignment, we can change it to full width. We can change the text of the button, the color of the button itself. That's a bit bright. Let's lower it down. Let's do that. We can change the color of the text of the button as well as the border. So if we go like that, you can see the border starts to widen up. Obviously that doesn't look good at all. So we're going to lower that down to zero. Here's one of my favorite features, the corner radius. I'm not a huge fan of sharp corners. So I like to add a corner radius. So as you can see, the higher we go with the number, the more the button starts to circle out until ultimately we get some that looks like this. Now my favorite radius is probably about a six because you still get that square button look, but you get that feel of the rounded edge, which I think looks amazing. And then of course, lastly, we have padding where you can make the button a little bit larger or make it a lot smaller. And there you go. That is a pretty basic, probably the most basic form you can possibly make on high level. You will see this form all the time on websites, funnels, you know, pretty much anywhere on the internet trying to get your name, number, and email. But as you can see over to the far right, there are so many different options and even custom fields where you can literally do anything that you want. So I want to break down what you can actually do with forms. So first things first, we're gonna start with the standard. I'm gonna delete these up here. And you can see all these different options. We've got organization up here. We've got state, website, source, date of birth, text, HTML. You've got an image option and even a CAPTCHA. This is what a CAPTCHA looks like. We've all seen this on so many different sites where it makes you claim you're not a robot so you don't get hacked or whatever they think robots are doing to these forms. But basically, these are all these standard options that everyone has seen and probably messed with. However, if there's an option in here that you want that you don't see, that is where you scroll all the way to the top you head over to custom fields, you scroll to the bottom and you click add custom field. You can now literally create almost anything you could ever imagine. We're gonna start with the simple text. So the text is basically just like full name and email where you have a text that says something and then a placeholder for you to put in the answer. So for this scenario, let's do like your dog's name or something like that. Let's say that it's a dog website and they have to put in the name of their dog to maybe get a collar made or something like that. So the name of the field is going to be name of your your dog. And then for the placeholder, you could also put name of your dog or what I see a lot on forms is putting in examples of names of dogs so that they know even more that, hey, this is where the name of your dog is supposed to go. So here you go. You can see I put example, buddy, spot, max, different names of dogs, and we will save it. It is now down here at the bottom and we can put it up here at the top. And there you go name of your dog and then put the examples down here so that they could put the name of their dog right where the placeholder is, press submit, and now you will have that information to maybe use later on in a workflow or in the added notes section or maybe add a tag, anything that you want, now you can use this. I'm gonna get rid of some of these over here and we're gonna try again with some of the other options. 
Let's do large text. So with large text, this is usually when someone has to type in a lot of information. This is like, hey, describe your problem, write your message, something like that. So as you can see, I have a describe your project over here on the right. I've used this multiple times and this allows the customer to basically put in as much information as they want. So I'm gonna type in describe the project, mostly because I can't put in describe your project because I already did that right there. And then once again, for placeholder, we could put like examples of what the project should be described as like, hey, the dimensions or the color scheme or you know whatever it may be i don't know what this project is that we're hypothetically making here but for right now let's just put describe and then that thread save now we're going to drag and drop describe the project and there it is now they have a lot of room to type in as much as they want this comes in handy so much you're going to get clients all the time that have all these crazy ideas and they want all this stuff and you don't know how you're going to make a form for it you're like how do i make a form for that well just with these two options right here you can cover so much and really customize it any way that you could ever imagine and there's still a ton more options left so now we're going to go down to add custom field again we're going to do numerical so this is of course if you have something that is numerical if you're putting in numbers. So this is going to be a custom value for something extremely direct. You're trying to get a direct number out of, you know, the customer or the user. So for this one, we're going to type in number of locations. The form is asking how many locations. I'm not sure what for, but it's basically just asking, put a number here for how many locations that you have. And then for placeholder, of course, we can do an example again, and it could say one, two, three, and save. And I already have it. I already have number of locations in here, so it's not gonna let me do it. This will happen a lot. If you're making a lot of custom values, you will come across the same custom value more than once. So for this, I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna change this to a hashtag real quick and press save. Now we're gonna take number of locations, put it right here, and there it is. So now if I previewed this, I would only be able to put in numerical values. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. Let's try something new, add custom field and phone. So I'm not actually gonna mess around with phone because we have phone number already in there. Basically what this is saying is that with the phone number custom field, you're gonna see that little you know American flag or the flag over there on the left to say, hey, the phone number is in this area right here. And then they're gonna, of course, force you to put in a phone number. And if the parameters are wrong at all, it's not gonna let you submit it. So just in case you didn't see the standard phone number, you can make a new one right here. Or if you wanna change the name, the name of the field and the name of the placeholder for phone number, you can also do that right here in the custom fields option under phone. And then of course we have monetary. This is for a money value. So if you need a form that collects the value of money, this is the one that you would use. So for this, we could put in like price range maybe. Let's try that. And then for placeholder, we can do another example and say like 400,000 or something like that. Press save. Add in price range, put it right down here. And there you go. You can even see the dollar sign on the left. So it is going to know and let them know that it has to be a monetary value. I also want to show you something over here in styles where you can do inline forms. And basically what this is going to look like if I drag and drop these down here is it's going to put these smaller options right next to each other because there's enough room. Obviously, I couldn't do that with describe the project because it's massive, but it basically can take a really long form and make it a little bit shorter and make it look a little bit better when it's on a, I don't know, maybe a mobile device or even desktop, it can just make it look way cleaner. I use inline form all the time. Now, yes, on mobile, inline form does not always work. Even if it shows it's gonna look like this on mobile, it might not. It'll probably look exactly like what we had before. So just be aware of that when you're making a really long form with like 15 to 20 different submission types because they could be scrolling for a long time. But I really like that option, so I wanna show you guys that. And next we have checkbox. I love the checkbox form. I think it's so clean, so easy, so cool. And I use it for a lot of different reasons. For instance, if you have multiple options and you need to checkbox one, two, or three, you know, however many, this is the way to go. Unless you have like 50 or 60, then definitely do a drop down menu. But if you only have like four or five, I really think this is a clean way to do it. Now, of course, the common one is going to be services needed. I've already done this over here on the right. So I'll show you what it ends up looking like. But if we did services, needed we did a placeholder of choose your service we'll even put an s right there so they can choose more than one and then we said google seo we added another option down here that said website design you know just different options text message services and let's do one more crm and then of course we cannot save it because it's going to say that services needed is already in here which it is so i'm going to show you what it looks like we're going to drag and drop services needed and there it is you can easily check box any of these off or all of them off whatever you want to do and it can go towards an automation or like i said before go to a tag or go to anything that you want but i just think this is a really really clean way of being able to pick multiple options in a form and speaking of multiple options we now have single options and multiple options so let's go to 
single real quick. So basically, this is a drop down menu. If you want to be clean and cut, if you have a ton of different options going in there and you just want a drop down menu and they can pick one single option, this is the way to do it. So for instance, something I see on a lot of car websites, it would say something like car brand, choose your car brand. We're going to say Ford, Chevy, Ram, Dodge, and let's do GMC. And we'll save this right here. We'll do car brand and you can basically click the drop down menu and have all of your different options. It's not going to let me do it. Of course, it's not in live mode, but you will be able to choose which one you want. Just any simple drop down. I know people in the group always ask, hey, where's the drop down menu? How do you get a drop down menu? Well, now you know. Let's add a new custom value and try multiple options. Let's actually do the exact same thing. So I put in everything the exact same way and I press save and then we're going to add that as well. And we're going to test out this insane form at the end and see what it all looks like. Now we're going to add a custom value again and we're going to go to radio. Now, obviously I can't do much with radio. I would have to have a file in here and they even tell you what type of file it needs to be. I haven't really done anything with radio before. I don't really know much about this custom value. I'm assuming it's pre-recorded. I'm not 100% sure how it works. So I don't really want to break it down because I don't want to mess it up. But maybe in the future, I will have a radio file to put in here and to test it out. And then of course, we have a date. This one's super easy. Basically, when you're trying to pick a date, a calendar will come up. You can pick the date that you want and it will automatically go into the system. So we can say like choose date, same thing, choose date and then save and we're going to push that one right here now we're going to add a custom value again and we're going to go to text box list so this one's a bit strange i've used it once before and honestly it wasn't my favorite thing to use i actually used it for the custom apparel store when i was doing like different sizes and quantities and now they have a quantity section so back in the day they didn't so this is what i used so for instance the name of the field was sizes and quantities and then the label was like a small with the value being, you know, quantity. And I did it again with medium, same thing, large, and same thing. And then if I'm not mistaken, you should be able to put in whatever you want right here, whatever numerical value that you want to put in. But I'm not 100% sure. I guess we'll find out when the <laughs> form goes live. This is just one I haven't seen you know, many reasons to use it. Maybe a lot of you guys will see this and be like, Oh, I could use this for this client or this, but I personally have only had to use it once. And it was kind of a nightmare. So yeah, not my favorite custom value. And then I love file upload. This is something that people use all the time. And I know it looks a little confusing, but it's not at all. This is whenever someone is trying to upload a file of some sort. So I actually also use this for that custom apparel store I was just talking about because they had to upload the file of, you know, a photo of some sort to put it on the custom apparel. So this one would be called, you know, upload photo and I may already have something like that over here to the right so if it doesn't go through that is why and then it's going to be like choose photo let's try that and then you can put in the different formats that are acceptable like a pdf a jpeg and a png for this instance let's just do jpeg and png and you can also allow multiple files and then put the maximum number of files as well so we'll say five is maximum and save then we're going to click upload photo down here and there it is and even says right here what is allowed a jpeg and a png right here and they can upload the file just as you've seen on any other site. Very cool. Love that feature. Add custom value again. And lastly, we have signature. This is pretty self-explanatory, but it's something that I've used a few times with different clients when they need to collect signatures from their customers. So the name of the file is going to be signature and save. And of course, it already exists. I've already used this one before. It is right here. So let's add it. And because I have inline form, it looks kind of weird. It usually goes around the entire square. So if I were to go to styles and make it not an inline form, you would see it look like this, which obviously would be much better when trying to fit your entire signature in a really small box. That would be pretty miserable. So there you go. There is the entire form from start to finish. Obviously, I don't think any client would ever want this form. That would be pretty random, but at least you guys got to see every single custom value that you can possibly do on a form. And hopefully that opened your minds to what you can actually do for clients. Because I don't think there's a single client that I've ever said no to in terms of what I could build for them on a form. However, I do wanna show you guys this form in action. So let's give it a name real quick. So we're gonna go over to options, change the form name to random form. And then another thing that I really wanna point out on forms that I think people forget all the time is after you've named your form and you're ready to publish, you need to check this out. On submit, what do you want to happen? This is huge because people will submit forms and be like, 
nothing happened. What happened? I don't understand. Like maybe they'll get a text like right away from automation, but they don't know what's happening. So having it go to a URL that says maybe thank you, having it send a message like this that says thank you right here. So just simple things like that, making sure that the form has some type of action at the end is huge and people forget it constantly. Even I forget it all the time. And then of course there's a Facebook pixel event and then sticky contact, which basically means if they filled up this form once they came back to the form later, it would have all their information in it. Or if that form led to another form for whatever reason, it's going to put in the information that the previous form already had. So if they put in their name, number, email, or something like that, the next form also has name, number, and email. Boom. It's already in there. They don't have to put it again. So we'll do sticky contact. We'll save the form. We can even integrate the form and take this entire code and put it into someone else's website already existing website like a Wix website or a WordPress website, or you can take a link like this. We can check out exactly what it's going to look like by using the link. And here we are. We can easily test this entire form out right here using the link. So let's start with the easiest one, the name of your dog. My dog is going to be named Buddy. The number of locations you can see right here, we have an up down arrow. So if I did three and then I clicked up, we go to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then for price range, we're going to do 300. We don't have to put the dollar sign because it's already there. Next, we've got describe your project. I can type as long as I want or until the form cuts me off. See? And then for services needed, I can click on the two that I want or all four, anything that I want to do. I can click on all of them or just a few of them. And then for car brand, we're going to pick four. That's our single option. Then we've got our multiple options. So let's pick Chevy, Dodge, and Ram. Then for choose date, we should have a calendar. Yep, we're gonna pick the ninth. Actually, that's boring. Let's pick all the way over here in December or January, and let's pick January 1st. And then you can see we've got quantity here. See, I had a feeling this was gonna happen. This is why I didn't like this custom value very much. It actually wrote down quantity. They're supposed to put in the value, so it actually wrote it down for me before I could even change it. It's all starting to come back to me. I haven't done this part in like a year and a half almost, so it's been a very, very long time for me. So sorry, I did forget, but if we erase quantity here and we put in the value, we could say like, you know, seven, whatever it is that we're getting. I also don't love the fact that they put a period at the end of S, M, and L. You can't really change that. I'm not sure why it's like that. But once again, guys, this is why I am not a huge fan of this custom value. I just don't, I just don't really get it. I don't understand the, the use case of it as much as I guess other people might. And then we have the upload photo. Of course, if we're going to upload a photo here, I will upload the DNS on Cloudflare record and it has uploaded. You can see it right here, DNS on Cloudflare. And I can upload multiple because I can upload as many as five, remember? And then lastly, we have the signature. This is going to be very rough, so bear with me. But obviously this would be a lot easier if I were on like a phone, but either way, we're sticking with it. This is actually really hurting my, my hand here. Let's just Let's just do that. We'll just do one B. We're not even gonna do the rest. And then I can submit the form. And it says, thank you, right up here at the top. So that is how you do custom forms, guys. I know this form is crazy and you will never make a form like this, but I really hope this helped you. I think this was kind of fun. I liked going through the entire form again because sometimes it's just a good refresher at how powerful this thing is and how much you can actually do and customize inside of the form builder. And I'm really excited to start making more videos like this in the future and focusing on really specific things like the surveys maybe next or the chat widget next or opportunities or contacts or any of these things so that you guys can watch the videos and fully understand everything about high level because you know my motto is if you understand high level, if you understand the platform really well, you should have no problem selling it. You should have no problem leveraging it to make money in any way possible. If you know my story, you know I have multiple streams of income from high level and I use it for way more than just SaaS. So the more you know, the better chance that you have. So play around with some forms and understand that you have so much power right now and turn that into confidence and start getting some sales or start running your own business through the system. With all that being said, thank you guys for watching and check the link in the description below for all the free course information, to join our Facebook group, to sign up with me as an affiliate because I'm really trying to get to that top spot and I know I'm going to get it. I know we can get there, but I definitely need you guys' help. So you will find all that in the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.